Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Ephesians chapter 1. And we're going to bring in Ephesians 1. Kola Bashata. Give me a minute, please. Kola Bashikete Adabashata. Kene Debo Shikete Adabashata. Kola Bashikete Adabashata. Mele Debo Debo Shikete. Maposo Kodobo Shikete Adabashikete. Mele Debo Debo Shikete Adabashata. Led the Debosheke Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. If what you guys don't know is, can you unmute your mic and let's begin to pray? Ephesians chapter 1. We're going to declare that the eyes of my understanding will be open in the name of Jesus. The eyes of my understanding will be open in the name of Jesus. in Jesus' name of pray. I want to read um so we're at a retreat today. Um, if you can join you online, you can Apostle Fem will be with us later today. Pastor BC and a couple of people. But this morning we're praying about um, this scripture and it makes much sense. I want to use the message translation briefly. You know, you know we've There's nothing as dangerous as trying to just navigate in the dark, not knowing clearly what God has called you to do. Many spend their life open trying to navigate what it is that God has called them to do. We're going to cry out this morning. You see, this is, you know, I don't know how many of us, I'm really ready to jump in as many that are willing. This Pauline prayer, this Pauline prayer, you know, can Egi will say he prayed it at least 10 times daily. Till it becomes so, you know, this morning when we're praying, the Lord was just saying to me, You see, you know, a lot of times many of people struggle to pray because we are trying to form it, formulate and conjure the prayer. Sometimes just open scriptures and pray scriptures. You can go, you can, you have endless prayer points. Just pray scriptures. Endless prayer points. Endless prayer points. Just pray scriptures. But what has happened is a lot of times we are caught up in what should I pray? What did I pray? I want to challenge someone this morning. Open officials want to pray. The one time, the time I did counting, we had about over, over about 15 or 16 I am statements in Ephesians 1 alone. Ephesians 1 alone. So I'm going to pray this morning that I will know exactly what he's calling me to do. Exactly. I will see clearly. My eyes will be focused. The Bible says that the, if your eyes be focused, you'll be full of light. Focus beget light. If your eyes is focused, 
So we are going to cry out, Lord, every distraction. I don't see, I don't see distraction. My eyes, I pray that Lord, my eyes be focused and I will know, I will see clearly. I will see exactly what you're calling me to do. Can you open your mind and begin to pray this morning? In the name of Jesus. So we want to make progress in spirit and our spiritual um our, our spiritual journey in the name of Jesus. If where you are is not noisy, you'll mute your mic and let's press in. I say, Lord, in the name of Jesus, no more seeing men like trees, no more seeing men like trees, no more partially stumbling into purpose, partially navigating what you call. But Lord, our eyes be focused and we see clearly. Can you open your mouth and begin to pray this morning? Lord, we pray this for line prayer and we decree that our eyes are open. We see clearly. 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 I 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 see Amen. Mm-hmm. Was it going to pray a prayer? As we're, as we're praying that, as we're praying that, just let me know in the chat box if you can hear me clearly. Thank you, Jesus. As we're praying that, the Lord led me to a scripture. And as I opened that scripture, it was something else that jumped out of my spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. First Samuel chapter eight. First Samuel chapter eight. First Samuel chapter eight. Mm. Please let me know if you can hear me clearly. Thank you, Jesus. All right, cool. First Samuel eight. When Samuel got to uh, to be an old man, he set his sons up as judges in Israel. Hmm. His firstborn son was named Joel, the second Abijah. They were assigned duties in Beersheba, Beersheba, but his son didn't take after him. They were out for what they could get for themselves, taking bribes, corrupting justice. Fed up, all the elders of Israel came together and confronted Samuel at Bama. They presented their case. Look, you're an old man. Your son are following your ways. Here's what we want you to do. Appoint a king to rule us just like everyone else. When Samuel heard their demand, God, give us a king to rule us. He was crushed. How awful. Samuel prayed to God. God answered, go ahead, do what they're asking. They are not rejecting you. They're rejecting me as a king. From the day I brought them out of Egypt until this day, they've been behaving like this. But that's not where I'm going. Guys, again, the power of replication. Samuel was raised by Eli. Eli's true. In fact, you will have thought that because Samuel, Samuel came into the picture as a replacement for Eli and his children, that Samuel will know better on what to do for it with his children. Right? Because you are experiencing what you are experiencing now, it's not a guarantee that your children will experience it. It's not automatic. There's a place of raising your children in the way of the Lord. There's a place of praying them into it. Now, I was going somewhere with, with this prayer, but I was saying that knowing the hope of our calling, I feel the Lord is saying, 
pray that your children will know the hope of their calling. If you are, even though we have children now, we're going to pray this legacy prayer. Again, they came to complain that your sons are not like you. They are corrupt. They are taking bribes. They are corrupting justice. We are tired. Guys, even if the children of Israel are desired to have kings, because that's not just the reason why they desire kings, but the children of Samuel aggravated that desire, validated that desire. Guys, this is the exact similar message that Samuel had to deliver to Eli, that God has rejected him because of the wickedness of him and his sons and, and everything. Yet, you see, because you know what is right, doesn't mean you will do what is right. Mm. Because you know what is right, doesn't mean you will do what is right. Because you know, you see, hey, some of us have seen certain patterns by our parents, doesn't mean you will not repeat it. No matter how determined you are. Hi. And all of a sudden, he couldn't do anything about it. The same way, I don't know, I don't know if this is making sense to somebody. I will have, I'm like, God, we're going to cry. Father, this fire that I carry will not end with me. We pray our children into it. I pray my generation into it. I pray my lineage into it. We create a new pattern in the name of Jesus. You know, that polite prayer we were praying was for praying for the people in Ephesus. So you took and pray this polite prayer for your children, your great-grandchildren, that Lord, their eyes will be focused. And they will know the hope of their calling. They will know you intimately. Who is ready to pray such prayer? Because what is, what, what, how gracious is it? Now, after we have done all of these things, they call you mama pray you. You have done all of these things and it's just end with you. What is in your lineage? If the Bible could say in the book of uh, first Timothy, second Timothy 1, from verse 5, I was talking to Timothy and said that this fire started with your great grandmother, sorry, with your grandmother and then your mother and it has been passed on to you. Ah, we can pass on things to our generation. And it's a, it's not a function of you are married yet or you have kids yet or whatever. You can pass it on, begin to pray it. And then you can begin to pray to God for wisdom on how to raise those children. To be Anna received them. Um, Anna received Samuel and dedicated Samuel to God. Though Samuel was raised in a place system of corruption, it was not corrupted. So what happened? That there was no replication. But what is so? What he saw was the way the student, he, nobody met, he, he didn't receive it. He didn't, I don't think he experienced fatherhood in learning how to raise kids. But we know that God is the God of generations. He's interested in generations. God is faithful to generations. So we want to pray our children into it. Ah, my God. If you have the name of your kids, you're going to call them on their unborn children. They are great. Ah, hey, God. I'm just even processing things. My children will not just, they won't just, they won't, they won't, I won't force them to want to love God. I won't force them to want to go to church in real. And I know this, my nephew, one of my nephews, I mean, they are, his dad and his mom had to separate. It was a very funny relationship from the very beginning. It was violent, beating the mom and all of those things. And, you know, I mean, so many, very terrible tale. When I used to go to their place then, I used to see this boy, just one sports, just, you know, the father is going around carrying women and doing things, beating the mom. It's easy for that boy. Hey, but the Lord did a surgery upon the heart of that boy because, in fact, the man's first marriage, his wife died. And there are tales around that as well. His first children, they had nothing to write about. I'm trying to tell you that if you are waiting that your husband to come into this, he will come into it, no problem. Or you're waiting for your wife to come into it. But there's a way you can step into this for your generation and your family will catch up with it. So my sister had started going through a process. I mean, she's still on her journey of healing and just exposing herself back to God and exposing her children. This boy is on fire for God. 
this boy will gather the people in when it comes to my mom, grandma's house, all the children that my mother has. He's gathering people, he's interested in reading books, he's interested. He say, I want to be a part. I, I can't tell you what happened to this boy. This boy is not coming from a place where he saw things. But all of a sudden, he's looking at his aunties, myself, and Fikayo, looking at his mom. I mean, this boy, let me share a testimony. And I share with you about the school, school drive on, on, on Monday. It was one of the people, the Lord, since last year, you know, take up this child. I said, God, how will I do this? Like, this children thing is expanding, oh God. And I mean, we're just three. And I want to thank God for everyone that's given and for all those that will still give. God bless you. I'm telling you, I'm saying this way for a reason. So I went there on third on Wednesday. And I said, I called him because he came around to study, to do holidays. So I called him with his mom. I said, oh, well, the Lord God, I don't know how this will be done. Because as I tell us, I don't have anything. I don't have any, I don't know how. But I wanted to be sure. I wanted to gather it and tell him. Because I didn't want to raise his, hope, his hopes and dash it. He's going to SS1. And he's, he should have even gone beyond that. But because of family, all the things they've been through. So I said to him and I said, well, the Lord is saying that we should take you to this school. Um, I don't know how God would do it, but just keep praying. And he broke down in tears. He broke down in tears. He, and his mom started shouting. He said, he has been saying it, P.I. He has been declaring. He said, my mommy, I'm going to this school. I'm not going back to Abelta. I'm going to this school. And when I said, how are we going to do it? Say, okay, I believe. He said, mommy, you don't have faith. Mommy, I'm going to this school. I'm talking to Jesus about it. He went for youth alive to go to winners. This boy is in technical in winners. So he goes to winners and then he is in the technical. He just came back from the youth alive. He said, ah. I, I said, how was it? He said, ah, mom, ah. He, he, Papa, it was so powerful. I mean, the glory of God. I'm looking at this boy. I can't reconcile the boy I used to see. That I just want to wake up and drink Coke and Fanta. Just, you know, nothing. So I spoke to my dad. You know, my mom told me that just trust God. And he said he would find something, but look at what God, and this guy was crying. He said, I still said it. I said it. My mommy, I said it. I told God. I told God. I told God. And I know, because these are things that marked my own life to growing up. I can remember vividly my dad passing out in my hand. And I said, Jesus, Jesus, bring back my dad. Bring back my dad. And my dad came back. I can count. I don't know what prayer I prayed. And they said, there are things that we're going to pray. Father, you will create things that will mark the life of our children. It doesn't have, it's not, it doesn't have to be lack of. So it's not as if, you know, your children can be graced in affluence, affluence. And yet, they are so enriched that they will be saying, Mommy, Mommy, I, I, want to, I, I see angels. Mommy, I want, to, I want to build hospitals. You can't, what is not a function of lack of wealth is a function of the consecration of their hearts. So I broke down in tears. I said, Lord, you will honor the prayer of this boy. Because now we have talked it. So I saw the reason why. And by the grace of God, what by the grace of God is the only reason I'm on the ball. I was like, I, 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 had, I had to do the video. I said to some of my sisters, I was, I broke down. I said, God, if you can honor the, and you know, you know what the Lord, you know what came to me? Your obedience is someone's assurance. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. It didn't make sense. We have not done, I just, I, Normally, I want to have it before I tell the boy. But the Lord kept nudging my heart. Tell him. Tell him. God wanted to encourage the boy. Because apparently, before I entered the house, the mom was just telling him that, whoa, Bobo, while you are waiting for this, okay, let, whoa, let's go back to Abel. That's where I resume. Go, don't start. God will meet you. Say, mommy, you don't have to stay. Before I enter, he was still telling his mom, mommy, I've prayed to God. God will do it. I said, look, at why, why Bible will say that to, to enter the kingdom, be like children. Your obedience is someone's assurance. Your obedience is the, is the trigger for someone's testimony. Your obedience is some, God's answer to somebody else. You see where a lot of us are waiting. And God has released the answer. You know, I was praying. On th- I was so overwhelmed. And as I prayed on Thursday, and the Lord said to me, if you see, wait, wait a minute. The way I choose to bless, it could be, it's through opportunities, Men, it could be ideas, it could be it was just laying up. Allow me to do it anyway. Just trust me. Why am I saying all this prayer? I've seen a boy raised from the unlikely situation 
And just his mother trying to gradually expose him to God. Beyond exposing him to God, God did a walk. That boy is, I'm going to cry out this morning. You're going to cry out this morning. Your children will not just love you too. Of a uh, uh, baby shakulu, kulu, kulu, kulu. Your children will want to hear TD Jakes. Ah, male de kelebo shata. I am praying this prayer because I understand it. God put an appetite in me way before I knew what appetite was. Your children, will, now you have to pray to God for grace because there's a grace needed to raise such kind of children. Because they cannot tell you that mommy, I want to go to midway service and say, oh, I'm tired. You must go. They, you cannot say, ah, whoa, there's no, whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, there's no, this thing, no. You have to, because if these children are having the desires, so God needs mommy and daddy too. But I'm going to cry out to God. Father, I just said the Lord said something. I'll stop being a lukewarm parent. I just said that in my spirit right now. I will stop being lukewarm. I will stop being a lukewarm parent so that I can fan the flame of the fire of my children, my unborn children. Because you cannot want to not fight. Like you can't be. You can't be a child that you, are, you can't be shutting your children. They want to ask questions, but you don't have an answer. I remember someone had to come in, I went to go and give my children no general general. They're not disturbing me with questions. You have to be ready. So I'm going to open. I don't know how you want to pray this prayer. It's a double for prayer. Make me. A parent, I receive the honor anointing that can release my child completely to God. And Lord, we dedicate our children to you again. Can you open your mouth and begin to pray? Wherever you are, if it's not noisy, unmute your mic this morning and we begin to pray. <laughs> I Thank 
in Jesus' name of pray. Father Lord, we thank you. As we're praying, if you think the Lord was dropping a few things. Oh, Shalabai. The Lord is dropping a few things. Mm. We've always done things quietly for children and teenagers. I remember sometimes the Lord would just leave me. I remember, I've shared this story and I said we all sense of unity. I feel the Lord is saying that pay attention to the children who have neglected them a lot. Not just as a ministry, not, I'm not even talking as a ministry, I'm talking about as individuals. It could start with your own children. It could start with, you know, friends and everything, whatever we need to do. I remember one day, the Lord told me to get some things for some kids on the street. So we'll share it and give it to them. And one day, I will never forget this. I believe that that was God. The child, now in picture a child that they don't wear clothes, other children that sometimes they are pushing tires and, you know, you know, and one day, the one, that day, one of the child was, no, 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 another day, the child looked at, a child looked at me and muttered the words, thank you. You know, when you're saying thank you, but it's not out, I don't know where that boy will learn that. Look me in the eye. I said, thank you. Oh God, that, that melted my heart because I knew that was God. I knew that was God. And I feel the Lord is saying that who will I trust to look out for these children? Who will I trust to be dedicated in creating curriculum, things for that fun? Who will I trust to come up with games for these children? Quiz, board games. Who will I trust to begin to teach your children to be, after, to be influential and to be generous? For those of you that you have, your children are privileged, you know, will you begin to teach them to be generous? Who will I trust? And Lord, we just yield ourselves this morning for what you want to do. That our eyes will be clear. And you've shown us this morning. You no, know, my husband said something very powerful. By the way, I'll try and see if I can get the link of what Bishop's message yesterday at the retreat. My God. He said something yesterday about how God is not, we're not just here. God is not just here to tell God our needs. God is here to also reveal his needs to us. God is here to reveal his needs to us. So I pray for us that we'll not be tired. I pray for us that we would open up fully to the will of God in the name of Jesus. And at the end of the day, we have reasons to thank God and glorify him in the name of Jesus. I pray that we will not be lukewarm parents. I pray that we'll not be tired. You know, anywhere you need strength, love you. And I don't know who you are. There's someone here. God is saying, get help. If you need to get help, get help. Get help. Get the structure and system that is necessary to facilitate what you need to do. I get the Lord said the Lord is healing homes for the sake of his children. God will heal homes. God will change lives. God will set things in motion in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, we give you praise. Lord, we give you all the glory. Lord, we give you all the honor. 
Lord, we thank you because you're a good God. We pray that, Lord, our eyes will see clearly what you've called us to do. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Today is a dear, my one of my, and I say what well, I, I I'm I'm anyway. Today is the birthday for someone very dear to our hearts as a ministry. We call her Mama. She is. She's a daughter, she's a sister, she's a friend. I am so glad to be a spiritual company for her. I am so glad for everything she's been to think. I thank her for technology. She's one of the, the pioneering students of School of Intercession of IRA. Um, happy birthday, Tony. I celebrate you. I love you. Thank you for being consistent. Thank you for how you're doing. You know, well, you had the retreat, and I just remember she used retreat last year. Let me just put it out there. Get ready for a retreat in November by the grace of God, women's retreat in November. And while I was thinking of how it's going to be, I heard the Lord say, build deep, build deep. And that might be my word. Build deep. So by the grace of God, we get more details about the retreat for women. Um, it's, it's always a great time. Always a great time. You don't want to miss it. Always a great time. We'll let you know by God's grace before the end of next week or upper week latest so that you can begin to plan. If you need to get leave from work, get leave from work and we know what to do. Happy birthday, Mama Shees. Happy birthday, Tony. We love you. Thank we celebrate you. you. This yeah. is the least you will ever be. In Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. Amen. God bless Thank you. you. Amen. All right. Do you do have a testimony? Yes, I do. Thank you, Jesus. I've been praying. <laughs> All right, go ahead. I just said the Lord said, yeah, I have a testimony. Go ahead. Yes, I'll just uh, make it very brief, but I need to just sing this, this song. When I think back over my life, and I think things all over I can truly say that I've been blessed I've got a testimony God has been faithful I just want to thank God for his faithfulness I remember last year vividly this time last year there's some things I didn't even know were going to happen this year this time last year you know I was just in that space asking God for the next phase. I didn't know what it was going to be, but I didn't know it was going to be a drastic shift that I least expected. And I'm so grateful to God. The shift, the instruction, dot off, leaving comfort zone. I'm grateful for obedience. But I don't know. I just want to encourage So Obedience doesn't mean you have everything flowing the way you want it to be. Just keep going. This year, I've experienced a lot. Oh, I've wept. Oh, I was uncertain. I didn't even know what was happening. You know, May, June, July, I experienced what I'd never experienced before. And it felt like, God, are you still there? But in it all, it gave me grace to remain thankful. In it all, he held my hands. In it all, he surrounded me with amazing people just to prove to me that I am here with you. I don't know what he's doing here. That's the honest truth. But I'm just grateful. I look back over my life. You know, that will make you feel, oh, what has he done? What has happened? But he's done a lot. I'm just grateful to God. Yes, I'm that girl God has helped. God has helped. Like I said, I don't know what tomorrow lies, what tomorrow holds from, but I know the one who holds my tomorrow. And I'm deeply grateful to God. And for this amazing community, God bless you. For everyone that has been part of this journey, I want to say, God, we honor you. Thank you, PI. Thank you for always speaking of us, for always teaching us. Ah, what an honor to be connected to you and this platform. God bless everyone. And thank you all. Amen. Amen. What's she saying? Wait. I don't know how it happens, and but the, the Lord, I don't know, permit me, let me just put a bit of context. It didn't make sense to us that the Lord will help them to build this beautiful house. We we're just excited, and then the Lord will move them out. Almost like, I don't even think she has been able to just really enjoy the beauty of what they're doing. But God is a faithful God, and he knows what he's doing. And I know that for as many people, 
I think from Twain's life, one of the things I will always hold on to is the fact that you are progressing. No matter how gentle it looks, <laughs> you are progressing. And do not attach yourself to anything but God. Do not attach yourself for anything for God. God bless you guys. I want to say she went through something this year. It was, <laughs> I mean, all I can say is that truly we need to know God much more than what he can do, but know him for who he is. Hallelujah. God bless you guys. Have a fantastic day. Remember, you can join the other watches by 9 a.m. By 12 p.m., the worship watch. Um, by 12 by three, by six, by nine, 12, and we're back again, 3 a.m., 6 a.m. tomorrow. God bless you. Have a fantastic day.